Hey y'all, welcome back to another ballistic scale test. Today we're gonna be shooting Hornady Critical Defense 223 Remington. This is their 73 grain flex tip bullet. And here's the box for that Hornady Critical Defense 223 load, the 73 grain flex tip. Here is your ballistics information. Feel free to stop, pause, zoom in if you would like. Flipping it around to the back, Here's your promo info on the FTX bullet. So in case you don't know, the FTX bullet was designed back in the 2000s to allow pointed ammunition to be loaded in tubular magazine rifles for like 30, 30, 45, 70, 35 Remington, stuff like that. But it has since migrated onto other cartridges such as the 223. And right here it says it is, it's being used to help prevent clogging and initiate expansion. So not just for lever action cartridges anymore, apparently. Apparently, let's go ahead and open it up and take a look at the stuff. And it comes with nickel plated brass cases, nice and clean. The bullets sure do look cool. Let's yank one out, take a look at it. And there it is. There's your 73 grain flex tip. Let's go load them up and shoot some and see what they do. And the test rifle today is my CZ527 carbine. It's got an 18 or 18 and a half inch barrel. I don't exactly recall. Chambered in 223, of course. Up top, I've got a Vortex Crossfire 2 3 to 9 by 40 scope. And coming on back, I've got one of my leather cartridge pouch cuffs, which incidentally perfectly holds a CZ527 magazine, coincidentally enough. So it works for that as well. Check out my website, masonleather.com. I would absolutely love to make you one. And coming around to the other side, I've got to show you, I've got my wild boar design. We'll be taking three shots from 100 yards, firing into 10% ballistics gel that has been calibrated to meet the FBI's ballistics testing protocol. And while ballistics gel isn't an exact proxy for big game, it does provide a repeatable medium through which to test various bullets and ammo against each other. After the shots, we'll examine bullet expansion, weight retention, penetration, and velocity. My goal is to provide hunters like you and I with the most objective information possible to help us make the best choice for our particular hunting situation. The ballistics gel in this video has been sourced from Clear Ballistics. You can find a link in the description. So let's go ahead and shoot it. And we are down here at the blocks after shooting that Hornady Critical Defense 73 grain load out of the 223. And we did manage to capture all three bullets. And something funny happened when I came down here. One of the bullets was sitting right there just outside the blocks. It like penetrated through the crease and like slipped out. So that's pretty funny. So we're going to count penetration to right there on that particular one. But the other two are right there as well. There's one that made it just inside the second block. And then there's the other one right there. So penetration wise, it looks like our shallowest one is right about 15 and a half inches. This one and that one, we'll just give 16 inches to both of those. Pretty darn good, actually. That's not bad compared to some other loads that I've tested. Coming on over to the first block, I'll see if I can get a good angle on it. It looks like we had some good wound track that opened up very, very rapidly within about the first inch. And then you have that wound cavity back here, and then it starts to taper off right about here at just before the seven inch mark. So you have some pretty rapid shot going on right here. And then it penetrates on, you know, deeper than a lot of 223 loads that are supposed to be for medium game hunting. And this is just like a defense load. I don't know, that's pretty interesting. And let's go ahead and take a look at the velocities for that Hornady Critical Defense 73 grain FTX load out of the 223. Our high was 26.29, our low was 25.99, and our average was 2612, so pretty slow for a 223, but it's a little bit of a heavy bullet and I'm shooting from an 18 inch barrel, who knows. And here are those Hornady Critical Defense 75 grain FTX bullets recovered from the gel. This is a load that I was very, very interested to test to see if it would perform favorably alongside some of the 223 loads that are specifically marketed for deer hunting. So let's get into it. Weight retention wise, we saw 40. 41 and 43 grains respectively for an average of 41 grains retained weight that works out to 55% weight retention. And that is a bit lower than a lot of the deer oriented 223 loads that are out there. 
On to expansion, we saw 0 0.4, 0 0.42, and 0 0.42 inches respectively for an average of 0 0.41 inches. That works out to 1.9x expansion, which itself is a little bit on the low end, again, compared to some of the more deer-oriented 223 loads I've tested. On to velocity, we saw 26.29 for the high, 25.99 for the low, an average of 26.12 versus the factory build velocity of 2,790 feet per second. So these came in 178 feet per second slower than build velocity out of the 18 inch barrel of my CZ carbine. And then penetration wise, we saw 15 and a half inches, 16 inches, and 16 inches for an average rounded up of 16 inches of penetration. And that is sort of right there in the ballpark of some of the other 223 deer oriented loads that I've tested. It's not really coming close to the Barnes TSX loads. Those ones are penetrating a lot deeper than anything else, but this is sort of favorable and in the ballpark of some of the other ones. And on to kinetic energy with a 75 grain bullet going on average 2612 feet per second at the muzzle. We are looking at 1136 foot pounds of muzzle energy. Most of your deer oriented 223 loads are around the 1200 foot pound mark. This is just a hair lower than that. All right, y'all, time for my final thoughts on that Hornady Critical Defense 75 grain FTX load out of the 223. I was really looking forward to testing this load, just mainly because the bullets look really cool, I'm gonna be honest. So let's go over it. Weight retention wise, we had 55% weight retention, not super high, but they did maintain most of their mass. And I think for what these bullets are meant for, I think that's actually really good. Expansion wise, 1.9x expansion. There are some 223 bullets that do quite a bit better than that. There's some that do worse. This is sort of middle of the road. I'm not displeased with it, it's fine. And then on to velocity, we did come in 178 feet per second slow. Now, most people these days are shooting 223 out of a 16 or 18 inch barrel. And this critical defense line, I'm pretty darn sure are I mean, people are going to be shooting these out of ARs most of the time with a 16-inch barrel. So to come in that slow, I wish it was loaded a little hotter or the velocity on the box was a little bit more accurate. I mean, this isn't a varmint load meant to be shot out of a 24-inch varmint rig. And we're still coming in way under build velocity. And most of the time, I don't harp on the lack of velocity this much. But for what this kind of ammo is meant for and marketed towards, I think they could do a little bit better either in terms of making the ammo actually reach the stated velocity or just putting the more true velocity on the box. And then penetration wise, I'm actually very, very pleased with the penetration of this load. We averaged 16 inches across all three shots and it was very consistent. And for what this ammo is meant for, defense, it says right in the title, you don't want it over penetrating, but you want enough to get the job done. And I think 16 inches right in there is about what you'd want. That way it's gonna get through what it needs to, but not keep going too much farther. And then kinetic energy wise, with a 75 grain bullet going on average 2612 feet per second, we're looking at 1136 foot pounds of energy. It's a little bit weaker than a lot of other 223 loads I've tested. The velocity, if it was higher, the energy would be higher correspondingly, but it's not too far off. The average I'm seeing most of the time is around 1,200 foot-pounds of energy, and this is pretty close to that. It's not too far off. And that's just another metric to look at. So what would I use this particular ammo for? Well, I think for what it's meant for, if you were using a 223 for home defense type situation, I don't think it's a bad choice. Um, weight retention, I think, is good for that. If you had a bullet that maintained most of its weight, it's going to keep penetrating deeper, and you don't want that with a home defense type ammo. Expansion was fine. It was middle of the road for 223 loads against the ones I've tested so far. And penetration, I think, is right on the money. So all in all, I think this ammo really did just about what it was supposed to do. I'm pretty happy with it. If you or anybody you know has used this ammo, let us know how it did for you. Hey, if you enjoy these videos, check out my website masonleather.com and get yourself some leather gear handmade by me just for you. I've been handcrafting leather gear for hunters for over a decade and I would love to make you something. The link is in the video description. And check out my channel for more hunting ammo ballistics gel tests. I have some big news. Lots of you have emailed me or commented how much value you get out of my videos. And you've asked me how can you be a part of this and help support the channel. Well I got to work and now I have a way. 
I've created a Patreon account where you can join me in helping our fellow hunters. Click the link in this video's description and watch my Patreon welcome video, where I describe to you how your help will impact this channel and our community of hunters as a whole. And when you join me on Patreon, you'll get a lot more than I can give you here on YouTube. You'll have to go watch that welcome video linked in the description to find out the details. I'll see you there.